Hello, Dr. Gill here with another bonus video. In this video we're going to be checking out some more Spirit Temple stuff, including the other option that I had mentioned, using the Mirror Shield as a child. As you can see, it's invisible as a child, but it works. It works because I used a cheat to equip it, but it, once it's equipped it does work as a Mirror Shield, it's just completely invisible. And I decided to skip most of the sections as an of the Spirit Temple just because there's not really much to it Be because of Child Link being a lot more restricted in in the glitches. I basically had to do the dungeon pretty normally, very few glitches. So I just I just went through it normally. the The big thing I have to do is right here. I have to after I get rid of this statue face, I have to hover over there. I can't hook shot over there because I can't equip the hook shot. And even if, 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 if I could, even if I did equip it with the cheat. It would have either crashed the game or I would have just soft locked and couldn't do anything, so. Just, I have to hover there, and there's no real good consistent way to do it, so I just kind of winged it uh, using using what I know and skim through it because it's not that important to see. Uh, but this statue is weird because parts of the statue are the slippery slopes that I talked about in the Water Temple where you can't like hover over them properly. It's very strange. But all you have to do is get high enough and you can side hop in. Or just jump in. Uh, now the weird thing about the boss of the Spirit Temple is that the cutscene that normally happens to right when you walk in doesn't happen as a child. So if I want to fight the bosses, I have to go trigger that cutscene first as an adult and then go back and fight the Knuckle as a child. And that's basically what I'm doing here. Uh, this is the same trick I showed off to clip out of bounds, but I'm going to do it easier this time. I'm going to use Nehru's Love to super slide back. Because using Nair's Love is like a uh, baby mode for bomb tricks. If you trigger a, a ground jump off of a bomb while having Nair's Love, it'll always turn into a super slide. Whereas uh, without this, you would have to time it. So it makes things a lot easier. And if I were to backflip or side hop with Nair's Love and something hits my shield, it automatically becomes a mega flip. It's like training wheels, basically. So it makes things a lot easier, but generally not using runs because it takes longer or you just don't have Nair's Love. Yeah, so I had to trigger that cutscene in order for Childling to actually fight the Knuckle. I, I don't know. I don't know why it's like that. Uh, I'm told it's just somehow some because of the way this particular mini boss fight is triggered. It requires that cutscene. I, I don't know. It's very strange. But uh, beating beating the Knuckle is pretty easy as a child too. Uses the same strategy. Just takes more hits because you don't you don't have the Bagaran Sword or anything. But other than that, yeah, it's nothing special. I, again, one thing you will notice about the Mirror Shield is that uh, it doesn't work like the Healing Shield where he has to crouch on the floor to use it. it he holds it out like a Diki Shield. But if you can see the, when the light reflects off of it or when I use it in this coming fight, it's still the same size as the Mirror Shield. And again, again it works. It's just fine as a child. It's just you can't equip it normally ever. It does look pretty funny though because you know he, when he looks like he's shielding it with his bare arm. Uh, and the slingshot will also make twin rovers spin around like the hookshot does or like the bow and arrow as long as you have seeds. Uh, if you have no ammo, it won't work. Same thing with the bow. And then from here, again, it's a pretty typical fight. Uh, nothing special, but it does look... This really shows how the Mirror Shield is sort of working right now. While it's holding a charge, you can see the size of it and how he holds it out. I don't know, it looks really strange. It shows that, I don't know, there's some capability to it. If you could ever manage to equip it in-game, but it doesn't seem possible. Uh, I using Deku stick jump attacks basically and if you attack fast enough you can actually kill her in one cycle with just the jump attack power basically I could have also just done jump attacks but usually crush stabs are always faster or just easier pretty simple but now we're going about to take on what I think is probably the dumbest trick in this entire game uh, first I will show off that I'd miss this attack but right when it ends they're gonna go right into their next form. This is because this is because I'd actually hit her um, enough times to trigger this form already, but they can still keep firing after that sometimes. 
that, which is all that's completely RNG. So, it, but it's possible for them to just continually attack, even though they're totally ready to go into their next form. But okay, this is the the dumbest the dumbest trick, the dumbest glitch that I'm aware of in Ocarina of Time, and I have no idea why it works, why it exists, but uh, it does take a little bit of setup to do. So right now I have the Goron Jump Attack Sword, and I attack her twice. She's one hit away from dying, but I have to hold on from killing her right now. So when you get hit with three charges, that's what triggers the shield blast coming out of your shield, and that's what stuns her. What I need to do is kill her at the uh, while that blast is still going. So I have to kill her with basically the first hit that she's stunned on, which is why I couldn't kill her right uh, previously. So what I'm gonna do is I check to make sure she's gonna shoot the fire since I'm so close, and then it stuns her, and then I kill her while it's still blasting, and it keeps hitting her during the cutscene, basically, during her cutscene of her dying, and that's important for triggering this glitch. That's what causes the glitch is coming up. And again, I don't know why. I don't know why this works, or what that specifically does. I suppose maybe it interrupts some part of the, the actor, it ch triggers something not working. But once I've done that, once I've triggered it, what I have to do now is literally wait. I have to wait here for about seven to eight minutes, real time. And that's what I'm doing here. I, just, I sat here and waited for about seven minutes. And I'm, I'm going through quickly so you don't have to. That's what I'm doing here. Until... What was that? Something happened. Trying to, trying to figure out where... Where that came from. And then... What the heck? I just got hit by ice. And if you listen to the sound effects that are happening, you can hear some other stuff. So what's happened here is that when I kill Twin Rover in the way that I've done it, and after I've waited seven to eight minutes, what happens is that an invisible Twin Rova will eventually spawn and start attacking you. I have this is not this is not a trick, this is not editing. I I wouldn't have any idea how to do this. I wouldn't have any idea how to fake this. It is something real that happened, and I have no idea why. And it's so strange because, if you notice, the blasts are always coming from the same spot. Like right now, I, I face this direction the whole time. But when I try to attack, there's nothing there. Uh, what I'm not super sure on is that I, I believe there is a separate hitbox for actually hitting this invisible Twin Rova that isn't where the blasts are coming from. But I'm not sure if it's just in another spot or if it's moving around. I think if there's an invisible Twin Rova, not where the blast is coming from, that's just moving around that you actually have to hit. I was really having a hard time pinpointing it because she's invisible, but based on the sounds that I was hearing, I think she's moving around. I'm not incredibly sure though. I don't know, this trick is just incredibly ridiculous. I have no idea why this happens. If anyone has any idea why this might be, I don't know. Take a guess, or tell me, take a guess. I have no idea. But I stun her and it takes one hit to kill her, and the cutscene happens again. As you see. I... I don't know. It's just completely ridiculous. See, and it's the same cutscene. Nothing different about it. I'm speeding through it again, because this would be like the fourth time that I've shown it off in my videos or something. And I just... I don't know. It's this trick absolutely confounds me and it's incredibly dumb. I have no idea why it exists. It's silly. And pretty much completely useless. The one uh, consequence, uh, repercussion it has is that afterwards, if I were to go check the heart containers, it actually does spawn another one. So if you wanted to, you could actually spawn multiple heart containers this way. You could just keep doing the same glitch over and over. But you have to wait so long to do it that it's not worth it. So yeah, really dumb trick, no idea why it exists. This game is weird and strange and dumb, and I have no idea. Bye everyone.